What's going on YouTube, Super Insane 18 here, and one of the most requested videos that I've had over the last couple of months is going to be Drytron, specifically for Master Duel. So that's what I'm gonna show you today, and I was never really sure how to go about it, so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over the profile that you're seeing in front of you, give you some reasons as to why I play what I play, and then show you guys a couple of games. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So you can see here that we are starting off with EVA. Thankfully, EVA is not banned in Master Duel, which does make Drytron a much better meta contender, and being a best of one format, having to put out a boss monster that will just let you get a ton of negates off of all the fairies that Eva can get you is actually just kind of disgusting. That's why if you uh, watched my Master Duel uh, tier list when the game first came out, I put Drytron as one of the S tier decks. But moving on to the Drytron monsters themselves, we are going to be playing three copies of Alpha Thuban because it is one of the better ones being able to search you any of your ritual monsters. We have two copies of Gamma. I think two is the correct number for Gamma, just because you want to be able to hope you open it in case of hand traps, and also have one in your deck to send off of your uh, Mu Beta, but two is definitely a good option. I wouldn't play more. We have three of our Zeta. This searches any of our ritual spells, which is definitely a very good thing to be able to do. And then we have one copy of Delta. This is just a nice one of. It adds an additional Drytron name, since all of the Drytrons can only summon once per turn. Um, but on top of that, it also is just a little bit of a consistency card being able to reveal a ritual monster or a ritual spell to get a draw. On to our fairies, we are playing three Herald of Orange Light. This is just really good as a negate being able to discard itself in another fairy, but not to mention it is just a 1-4 negate if you have your uh, big boy Herald ritual on the field. We have three copies of Diviner. Diviner is an absolutely insane card for honestly any ritual deck, but for uh, this deck particularly, it does let you combo off really well, being able to just send your Herald of Arclight from your extra deck and then uh, use that to get another search. Then we play one copy of Natasha. The number of games that I have won solely based off being able to just use this repeatedly to steal my opponent's board and link climb all the way up. And then three copies of Ben 10. Unlike the actual TCG ban list, Ben 10 is at three here. Uh, so why wouldn't we play it at three, especially since we are opting to play the perfection build instead of the ultimateness. And then we have our last Cyber Angel with Ida 10. This is just a good way to kind of recur our ritual spell so that we can use it multiple times in later turns because the adding back from Grave is only once per turn. Now, we do have the Herald of Perfection. I do think that in Master Duel specifically, the Herald of Perfection variant is better than the Herald of Ultimateness because Ben 10 is at three. Since Ben 10 is at three, we can abuse the Herald's ritual spell, the Dawn of the Herald, to kind of just recycle our Ben 10, um, but that does mean that we have to see the Ben 10 in our hand, so that's why I would only do this in Master Duel. I would not do this in, I mean, I wouldn't play Drytron with the fairies anymore in TCG anyway, but back when we had Eva, I think the Ultimateness build was better in real life Yu-Gi-Oh and the uh, perfection build is just better in Master Duel. And for our last monster, we do have the big boy Drytron Medionis Draconids. Uh, this is just a really good way to kind of push for game. And also, if you get stopped, it's a good thing to end on because it is still two uh, disruptions on your opponent's turn. We have our one copy of Foolish Burial. This is essentially just another Drytron name since they can summon themselves from the grave. Uh, three copies of Cyber Emergency. This is just a really good search card because it can search any of your Drytrons. Three, Preparation of Rights. This is to search any of your Cyber Angels, mostly Ben 10, as well as your Herald of Perfection in a pinch. Followed by the Pre-Preparation of Rights, which is more, more for your Herald of Perfection, because you need to be able to search the Ritual Monster and its Ritual Spell. Then we have our three Drytron Nova, again, just like an e telly for Drytrons, not any real explanation that's needed. The Dawn of the Herald, this is why I think that the Perfection build is better for Master Duel. Not only do you have the added consistency in being able to play cards like Preparation of or Pre-Preparation of Rights, but the effect that lets you add back your Ben 10 if you use it is actually insane. And then we have two Medionis Drytron. I really think that this is the best at two because it makes it sure that your uh, Zetas aren't dead after turn one. One, and if they do something stupid like banish it from your grave, you'll always have an access to another one. On to our extra, we have the one Natis as a later game target for your Diviner. The two Herald of Arclight, this is really self-explanatory, you send it off the Diviner to get a search. You play the Kiki Nagashi Fuko. I think that this is better than the Lyrilusk rank one, because if you get hand trapped and you get stopped, you can sit on this and it guarantees that you live at least one turn, which is really all that you need, but it also lets you get into your Zeus package. We have the one copy of Mubeta. I don't think you need more than that. The Downard is just part of the Zeus package. 
The Beatrice is essential because it lets you send your Eva on both turns, getting you the maximum number of searches for the maximum number of negates, and then the Zeus to finish out the Zeus package. Uh, again, this is just in a weird order because of how uh, Master Duel sorts it, so I, I would have grouped all the Zeus package together, but I mean, not really much you can do. We play the One Link Karibo. This is just a good way to get your uh, Drytrons into the grave if you need them. For example, if you Nova out, let's say Alpha, and you need the Alpha in the grave to summon it to get its effect, you just link it into the Link Karibo and you're done. The IP Mascarina is really crucial to the combo because you end on it and it lets you do stuff like either Nightmare Unicorn, Appaloosa, or even Underworld Goddess during your opponent's turn. This is more of a if you get stopped worst case scenario card, the uh, Light Charmer Lustrous here. Um, this is so that, or also not just if you get stopped, but it's a good way to link climb using the Natasha. If you Natasha and steal something your opponent has, then we have our Unicorn, self-explanatory Boral Sword. I think that Boral Sword is better than Axis Code in the Drytron deck specifically, just because the uh, Draconids is kind of like an Axis Code. You're able to just pop card your opponent control, so I'd rather just go for really big damage. The Appaloosa really doesn't come up all that much, but it is a target for your IP to just make more negates for your opponent. And then the Underworld Goddess is how you get rid of cards that you normally couldn't get rid of by just linking them away. Not to mention with the IP, you can do it on their turn, so when they put something on the board that you just want to get rid of, you IP into the Underworld Goddess using their monster and whatever else you have on your field, and that's going to do it for the deck profile. Let's go ahead and show you guys some games. Alright, so we got into a game. Let's hope that we get lucky and win the coin toss again. So it does look like we lose. Let's see what our opponent's going to choose for us to do. He does make us go first, which hopefully we just open and make him regret that. But usually when they make you go first, it means that they are playing some form of like kaijus or going second removal. So we actually open really good here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bait an Ash Blossom by using the pre prep first. Because if that go if that doesn't go through, we don't care because we have the cyber emergency. Uh, he does allow it which is definitely really good for us. Um, so let's go ahead and add the Herald and the Dawn of Herald. And then we can activate our Cyber Emergency. He's going to Max C, which definitely interesting. Um, hmm. Do I want to play through a maxi or just give him one? Because what I can do, let's do that. So since we opened the Herald, we don't necessarily need to play into his maxi. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, use the Diviner. We're going to send our copy of Herald of Arclight. We'll activate the Herald of Arclight and this will let us add Ben 10. Now that we have Ben 10, we're going to replace his Maxi, essentially, by summoning out our Herald using the Ben 10. Herald will hit the field. But what we're able to do is we can activate Ben 10 as Chainlink 1 and Dawn of the Herald as Chainlink 2. Dawn of the Herald will banish itself, adding the Ben 10 back to our hand. And then Ben 10 will activate, and here we'll actually add the Eva. And that will give us the maximum number of negates without playing into our opponent's maxi. Um, so let's go ahead and end the turn. Now, what this will do, essentially, we have to make sure we send the Ben 10 first, which kind of sucks because we won't be able to use it later on. But we do have the Alpha and the Zeta, which is all that we need. Um, but... <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to negate something with the Herald using the Ben 10. Okay, so he's going to summon Pankratops. This is pretty much going to force one of our negates. But I'm not upset about it because we'll still have two more negates. Uh, so he's going to Fossil Dig. Um, honestly, I think the Fossil Dig is worth negating. So we're going to send the Ben 10. Unfortunately, this doesn't count as a tribute, so we don't get the uh, Ben 10 effect. He's going to Pankratops. We're going to pretty much be forced to negate the Pankratops here, because uh, he's going to pro try and destroy our uh, perfection. Since we have the Eva, we can go ahead and use the perfection effect again. 
sending the Eva, and Eva won't get the maximum usage since all we have to banish is the Benten, uh, but we will be able to get another negate, which is pretty much the only important part here. Now, Eva will activate in a separate chain once everything resolves negated. Um, we're, oh, actually, no, we have the uh, arc light. I forgot we have the arc light, so we can banish both, and we're still going to get the maximum amount of negates off this Eva. So we'll go ahead and we'll add the orange light, and we will add the diviner. So now we do have two more negates. He's only got four cards in hand, so I'd be very, uh, very surprised if he's able to play. He's got another fossil negate. We're definitely negating that. Um, the fact that he hasn't used like a miscellaneous Saurus yet shows me that he doesn't have it. So I'd rather not let him get it just in case he already has something like Overaptor in his hand. Um, he's got two more or three more cards. We have one more negate. Hopefully that's enough to seal the game for us. Yep, he has the Overaptor already. Uh, so he was trying to dig for the Miscellaneous Saurus. We're going to go ahead and just negate that. If he has the Miscellaneous Saurus here, then oof, he got me. But uh, it looks like he doesn't. So we get to destroy the Overaptor. He does not get the effect. And that's probably going to seal the game for us. Oh, he already has the ultimate conductor. Interesting. Okay. Um, that's a little bad for us, actually. Hmm. Hopefully the card in his hand is not a monster that he can uh, go ahead and destroy, because it does have to be a monster, right? Yeah, destroy one monster. Um, so if that card is a monster, we might lose this game, actually, which a little upsetting. It looked like we had it. Um, let's go ahead. What we'll do first is we'll actually activate the Zeta. We'll pitch the Benten. We'll add our Medionis, and then Ben 10 will add us our Diviner. So here, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try... Okay, so he does have a monster. We're going to try and force the Ultimate Conductor by using our Diviner to send the Natis and pop the Ultimate Conductor. So we'll Normal Summon our Diviner, activate our Diviner effect, Here we will send the Natis and activate the Natis to pop the Ultimate Conductor. This essentially forces him to use it or lose it. So we'll get to see what the... Ooh, okay. So now we are in a really good position. Let's go ahead and our opponent is going to surrender. So that was a pretty quick game. Let's go ahead and show you guys another one. So we've got another game here. Let's see if we can get lucky and get to go first again. Uh, we do lose the coin toss. What is our opponent going to choose? He makes us go first. Uh, so I guess we're not going to really get to show you guys going second in this deck. Um, maybe I'll play until I get a going second game. I'm not sure. We'll see how this game turns out. Um, but we open pretty decent. Not fantastic, but good enough. Um, let's go ahead and activate our Drytron Nova. Okay, didn't prompt for our opponent to do anything. So uh, looks like they might not have everything. Can I? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and summon the Zeta. Then we're going to activate our Cyber Emergency and add our Alpha, because all you need for the full combo is Alpha Zeta. Let's go ahead and use the Alpha, pitching the Zeta that we have, adding us a copy of Benten. And then we can use our Zeta, uh, nope, tributing our Benten. Summoning itself and getting our Meteonis Drytron. You guys should know all this already, but for those of you that don't, Alpha Zeta is just the full combo. We get to activate our Ben 10 since it was tributed. This will add us our copy of Diviner. Then we're going to go ahead and make the Mu Beta. 
this will let us foolish a copy of gamma and then we'll go ahead and normal our diviner using the diviner effect this will let us send the uh, herald of arclight and then herald of arclight will activate and let us add our copy of perfection now here, since I do have another fairy in hand already, I'm gonna summon the perfection before I summon the Benten. And I'll show you why. Actually, um, no, we're, we're not gonna do that. He hasn't prompted for anything yet. We've done our five summons, so he doesn't have Nibiru. Uh, let's just go ahead and play it normally. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about what he has. So here we're going to summon out the Benten. We will use the Mubeta. Either of its materials does not matter. And then we can overlay the Diviner, which is now a level 6, since we sent a level 4, and our uh, Benten into our copy of Beatrice. Here we will activate our Beatrice. We're going to get rid of the Diviner first. And we're going to send a copy of Eva. This will just kind of load us up on the gates. We can go ahead and banish the Herald, or both Heralds, the Diviner and the Arc Light. Add a Orange Light and a, another Diviner to our hand. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our Gamma. And we're going to get rid of the Natasha here. I don't want to get rid of the Perfection yet, just in case he does have something in his hand, like a DD Crow or some other dumb card that will be able to banish it. But we're going to go ahead and use the Gamma Reborn, our Alpha. Then we can use our Medionis, lower either one of the two we just summoned. It doesn't matter which one, because we're just going to link them away. So now we're going to go ahead and link those into a copy of IP Mascarina. Actually, no, let's be smart about this. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to activate our Medionis. We're going to summon out our Herald here now that we have a bunch of negates. And thinking about it, I probably should have used the uh, Medionis Dry Draconids just so I had an extra negate, but it's not the end of the world because we are still going to pretty much just flat out win. Uh, so now that we've done that, we can get rid of our uh, Mu Beta for the IP. And what that will allow us to do is turn our uh, Alpha over here into a Link Karibo instead. And now we pretty much have the full setup. We're going to go ahead, we're going to switch that to on so that it prompts us to use our Beatrice as soon as possible on our opponent's turn. Then the Beatrice is going to let us send our second Eva and get more negates. Um, like I said, ideally, I should have kept the Natasha and gotten rid of the Draconids in my hand just for an additional negate. Um, if that ends up losing me the game, then so be it. Go ahead and roast me in the comments. Um, but with four negates and a IP... I'm feeling pretty confident. <laughs> so we're going to add another orange light. And a another diviner. Um, since he chose for us to go second, he could always just kaiju our herald here. Uh, but we will still have two negates since we have two orange lights. So two negates and IP is hopefully enough. Uh, he's going to activate desk bot. Um, I think I'll let that through. I'm not really worried. I mean, it doesn't really have an effect other than he can't special or pendulum summon except for desk bots. Uh, he's going to set one, set two. So he was definitely trying to OTK us with a jank strategy, um, seeing that he's playing desk bots. So I think what we're going to do is when it prompts us when he's leaving main phase, we're going to unicorn back one of those back row just so that it's one less card we have to worry about. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make the unicorn using the IP and the Link Rebo. Uh, 
uh, we're going to discard the Dawn of the Herald because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to target his middle back row. Typically, people set the card they want in the middle. Um, and he set it first, so I feel like it's more important. Uh, he has the option to continue his main phase, but I still have four negates, and he's only got technically four cards that are active because that face down could just be a spell. Uh, he ends his turn, and I think that's just another win for us. Uh, yeah, so we get our Drytron Nova. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate our Alpha. Getting rid of our Draconids. This will let us add a, another Ben 10, and this is just going to seal the game. Uh, we can turn that back to auto. We don't need it to prompt us for everything. Uh, let's go ahead and use the Ritual spell. We will lower the Alpha. Then we can Gamma the Alpha away. Gamma effect will summon us back our Mu Beta in attack position. Then we can Zeta, getting rid of our Ben 10. This will let us add a, another copy of Medeonis Draconids. Ben 10 will activate, giving us another Fairy or another Negate in our case. We'll go ahead and we will add the Ida 10. Then we can activate our Medeonis. We're going to summon out our Draconids using our two defense position ones because we don't need them anymore. And that should be game. I'm not going to move my Beatrice or my uh, Perfection into attack position just in case that face down is like a mirror force or something that gets rid of attack position monsters. Um, this is enough to seal the game anyway. So unless that back row is something scary, we're going to go ahead. We're just going to swing. OK, so we're going to go ahead and negate that. We'll get rid of probably our one of our diviners. And that's going to seal the game for us. Unfortunately, not the most meta of matchups, but it did get to showcase you guys the full power of the Drytron deck in Master Duel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Maybe consider supporting me on Patreon because for just a dollar, you can support the channel in a way that I would never be able to tell you how much I fully appreciate. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.